country director can be described as interesting. This is because it's in sharp contrast to recent push by commercial banks that are calling for an increase in dollar supply to help meet the needs of their customers. The stance of the World Bank country director might be in line with the IMF, which recently in a statement advised the Bank of Ghana to also build up the international reserves for that rainy day. But Mr. Laporte tells Joy Business, even though he doesn't support dictating to regulators, there are some best international practices that can be considered. The reason why I like uh, free floating exchange rate, even though it can be risky at times, is because it sends a signal. If, you're de if your currency is depreciating, it's not because uh, by chance. It's depreciating because there's a pressure or the conditions are there to allow it to depreciate. So if uh, I'm a minister of finance, I see your governor, you see your currency depreciating, then you know something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Either sometimes you cannot control exogenous factors, it comes from outside, maybe commodity prices have fallen and you are getting much less dollars than you did before. That's normal. And even then you have to take action. Sometimes it could be because your, your fiscal expansion or your monetary expansion is too too strong and you have to correct it. So to me, the uh, flexible exchange rate tells you always a story and you should know how to read it and what to do about it. Thank you. But is the Bank of Ghana at the crossroads when it comes to taking a decision on increasing dollar support for the market to help stabilize the Ghana city? Or what about those who are worried about the fact that heeding to this advice could leave depleting our reserves, a situation that could expose the country to some serious shortage of dollars come early next year, when businesses start importing more to restock from the first quarter of 2020. Government has begun work on some proposed projects that will receive financial support from the Green Climate Fund created by the United Nations. It is aimed at reducing the effects of climate change in the country. The Green Climate Fund has also been established to provide grants and other resources to countries in Africa to effectively undertake programs that seek to combat climate change. The country uh, project coordinator for Green Climate Fund in Ghana, Arabi Frimpong, assures that the process will be swift so Ghana can access uh, the fund by the second quarter of next year. It is expected that the selected projects at the end of a process will be done through a transparent and national stakeholder engagement. The Green Climate Fund was established in 2010 as an operating body of financial mechanism for the UN's Convention on Climate Change. Ghana is working hard to present a considerable project that will attract the needed funds. Project coordinator Airebi Frimpong is hopeful that the process will be concluded next year. Because your proposal is good, they are willing to fund it. They also want projects that are impactful. In, in that sense, they want projects that can really have significant impact in terms of addressing climate change. Once they meet their criteria, they are willing to provide you funding for that. So in, in, the, in the Ghana program, what are some of the projects you are looking at? Well, that is where we started the, 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 the development of the country program, because we don't have the, pro, the document yet. What we just done is the launch of the development of the, activi of the activities, right? So we just started the launch of the development, which means that we are now starting. But they are saying that at the very onset, you need to make sure that everybody is on board. So we need to let sure everybody, make sure everybody knows that this is what we are embarking on now. So people should then align themselves in a way that they can make inputs into the process. At the end of the day, we, we hope that uh, what comes out of the country program document is one that reflects the needs of Ghana. At the moment, we don't have the document yet. And so going forward, within the next six to eight months, we should be able to have the country program document ready that can then be submitted to the GCF. He has also been explaining what makes the program critical for Ghana. 15, 20 years ago, that by this time of the year, you know what the, 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 the weather pattern would have been like. All of us would need a lot of shea butter to be able to really survive the day. Today... It's, it's November and December, you can still get rains, right? So it shows that there's a, there's a, there's a change in the pattern. And that change uh, can also lead to extreme weather events, which can really affect a lot of the things that we do, especially people in vulnerable areas, like in the, in the upper uh, northern areas of Ghana, where the weather, weather can be quite extreme. So it's important that we, uh, we are the ones who suffer a lot 
when we are the countries in the, in the developing nations, we suffer a lot when it comes to the impact of climate change. So we should also be able to ensure that the things that will help us to adapt to these things, we are able to position ourselves very well. We can get financing that will help us ad address those things. So far, the Ministry of Finance is a leading institution for the program. Ebenezer Sabutis reports for Joy Business. Tonight, the Ghana Chamber of Mines is asking government to deepen consultation with investors and operators in the industry to promote a conducive environment for the mining industry. Now, according to the chief executive of the chamber, Suleiman Kony, uh, the mining sector is facing uncertain times as a result of policies that may be at a disadvantage to players. He spoke to Joy Business after commissioning an ultra-modern office complex of the chamber in Accra. Complex signals another milestone for the mining industry in Ghana as the leading producer of gold in Africa. The Chamber of Mines has been in the forefront of negotiation on behalf of mining firms in the country. According to the Chamber, uncertainty in policies and the issue of levies are identified as major challenges for the industry due to the potential of hampering growth. Chief Executive of the Chamber, Suleiman Koni believes a more collaborative approach between industry players and government can avert the situation. It's more collaboration and, and deepening of relations. Our mining industry thrives on certainty and it's important that we minimize surprises. And that requires that we actually engage continually with our various stakeholders, especially policy makers, so that we, we don't have the kind of surprises which would actually dampen the spirit of, of, of uh, would-be investors looking into Ghana as a very stable you know, um, jurisdiction for mining investment. So we continue to actually invest. Our member companies will continue to invest. But it requires that kind of collaboration and certainty around, around the in mining investors are quite worried about capricious policies. And that's why we continue and proactively engage policymakers to ensure that we have that conducive environment for us to be able to do our work. On his part, Deputy Minister for Land and Natural Resources, Benito Ousubio, urged mining companies to support initiatives and projects under the Minerals Development Fund. From the construction of roads to the provision of other social infrastructure, including health centers, schools and electrification projects, among others. My ministry is also continuing to partner local assemblies to improve infrastructure development in mining areas through the Mineral Development Fund. I therefore call on the companies to support local assemblies with the needed expertise in undertaking projects under the MDF to help improve the lives of their host communities. Revenue from the mining sector has been a major contributor to Ghana's economy. Ebenezer Sabotis reports for Joy Business. There is growing tension between port transport drivers in Ghana and their counterparts from neighboring landlocked countries. The drivers believe they have been shortchanged within the last few months considering the amount of cargo they transport. According to them, the earlier government steps in to address the situation, the better it will be to maintain the cordial relationship between them. Now, Vice Chairman of the Joint Association of Port Transport Union, uh, Shamsu Babayaro, stated this at the uh, annual Thanksgiving service in Tema. There's more in this report. The Thanksgiving service brought to the fore several challenges confronting the Joint Association of Port Transport Union. Among these challenges is the simmering tension between transporters in Ghana and other drivers in the neighboring countries. Members within JAB2 believe that their counterparts are taking over their work at the Tema port. Vice Chair of Jamsu Baba Yaro is urging the Transport Ministry and other stakeholders to urgently address the situation. Yeah, we sometimes even thought we are have been stampeded because we don't do anything again. Uh, about a week ago, 150 and 80 trucks have been loaded, but no Ghanaian vehicle is loaded. So our drivers are very annoyed and they even wanted to bring some confusion here. But we beg them and beg them and say, no, let's leave the government, discuss with him, follow the process. So this is the process we want to follow, and we are happy that the minister has now prepared to intervene. Otherwise, we have suffered and suffered, talk, talk a lot about this, but nobody is, li is listening to us. So we are begging you medias to come into our aid because drivers suffering here have got houses and they have got family. Meanwhile, Deputy Transport Minister Daniel Titus Glover has assured the union the steps will be taken to address the problem. We have the ports and our colleagues or our friends in the Sahelian 
talk about Burkina, Niger, and Mali, they use our ports. Fine, if you are using our ports, there are certain things that you need to do. I need to find out from Shippers Authority. I need to find out from uh, GPHA. There should be an arrangement in place. They cannot take all the goods away. Our people also need to work. That is why we also have trucks. So he had just whispered to me, and I've asked him to put it on paper, address a petition to my minister, and I know my minister will quickly listen to them, and we invite the, the Burkina Bays and the Malians and the Nigerians. So we all sit and talk about it. It's not flexing of muscles. It's about talking to them to understand that we are Ghanaians. We are interested in, in, in the goods that are being uh, transported to their country. If we have helped you to get your goods through the port, what stops you from giving us a share? The event was attended by the National Road Safety Commission, the police, Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, among others. National Chief Imam Professor Sheikh Osman Nuru Shaobutu graced the occasion and advised drivers to ensure safety on the roads. Now, more than 80 customers of Pumasudo, producers of Onga food seasoning products, have been rewarded for committing to the company's business vision. They want consumers to be on the lookout for brand improvements that distinguish their products from fake ones. Linda Nate is category manager for Onga food seasoning under Pumasudo, uh, Ghana Limited. She spoke to Lab Business during the Wholesaler Appreciation Night in Kumase. Prince Apia has more. Officials of Pumasido Ghana Limited, producers of Onga food seasoning product, have revealed plans to enhance its product come 2020. This follows concerns of possible infiltration of fake product onto the market by unscrupulous persons. Category manager for Onga food seasoning, Linda Mate, explains how important the move is. There were lots of consumer concerns that they shared, the products that, the products that they sell, the merchandising that they need, the POS materials that they also need to make their merchandising very fruitful. And all these issues were tabled, recorded, written, and we're also going to have solution feedback to them come 2020 in our next engagement. And so for a wholesaler, she feels that she is the right connection or she's the right person who sells rightly to the consumer. So what we are saying is that they would get us the right feedback that we need as a business to improve on our product day in and out. Because without those consumer feedback, we can never I mean, improve on our product. We always rest on our own. So their concerns, their feedback that we received this evening is going to be tabled and it's going to help improve on our brands. She spoke at the first ever wholesaler appreciated night in Kumasi. More than 80 wholesalers were presented with various prizes for their commitment to their work over the years. The year is getting to an end. Our wholesalers have, I mean, struggled in the market to make sure that our product is well displayed, well sold, and we've almost come to the end of the year. And what we are saying is that we are appreciating them for their hard work. And come 2020, we should see some new flavors some new recognition on our brands and even to also appreciate and recognize them for the work that they are also doing in the market. In 2015, Fafafe Amafoy, an accountant, decided to venture into mushroom production. Today she owns one of the biggest mushroom farms in the country, supplying farmers, hotels, restaurants, as well as households, their edible fungus. The mushroom queen invited the Joy Business Van over to her farm. 2018 Best Farmer Runner-Up in the Adentan Municipality, Product Innovation Award at the SME Ghana Awards in the same year, honorary visits from Queen Mathilde of Belgium, the President of the EU, and the list goes on. Those are some of the highlights of Fafafe Amafoy's journey as a mushroom farmer. And now she's earned the title, The Mushroom Queen. The idea to venture into mushroom production came to Fafafe while she was pursuing her master's. I came across an article, a newspaper article on the mushroom industry in Netherlands where they try to use the waste they have in the environment to create an economic value that is used so that in creating mushrooms which are of high protein and fiber. So I say, why not? In Ghana, most sawmills dispose of sawdust through burning. 
fast polluting the environment, so the idea of using sawdust to produce mushrooms got Fafafe excited. She decided to go through training at the Center for Scientific and Industrial Research. But why mushrooms? Mushrooms are one of the superfoods that the planet has offered mankind. It's very high in protein and fiber, and especially the B vitamins, and also antioxidant, especially selenium, which is found in only mushrooms. Farm hands are mixing the sawdust with grains just as we arrive at the farm located at one of Accra's suburbs. This will provide the base for the fruiting block. Once the blocks are bagged and sterilized, they are spawned with seeds and next the incubation stage. So this is where after the, the bags have been spawned and we incubate them for six weeks, this is the result. You see that the bags have turned white, what we seem to be dark brown, mm. it's now white. So the mycelium, which is this, the, the, the seed, have traveled down and has fully inoculated. Okay. So this is how a fully inoculated bag looks like. Fafafa tells me at this stage, even before harvest, she's able to sell thousands of these fruiting blocks to farmers. I guess this is the most um, exciting part of the <laughs> whole journey, right? Uh, when we get to harvest the mushrooms. Exactly. And so how many days does it uh, take for it to uh, reach the harvesting stage? Yeah, so from the incubation when they are fully matured, mm. It takes you just about five days and you start seeing mushroom. That's okay. the, even the maximum. Five from days. From three to five days. Depending on a good weather, you can start having your mushrooms. So what do we do? How do we have this? Yeah, so you carefully prick it out. Okay, let me try. <laughs> okay. And then with your scissors you, you take off the take it off. Yes, yeah, take it off. You started this in 2015, tell yes. me. How, how has the journey been like? Oh, it's been up and down with the challenges and exciting times. And I started with only 10 bags. But ten. The 10 bags. I, see, I, I don't know how many of them I <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah, we have almost about 50,000 50, uh, bags in circulation. Wow. Uh, it takes about three months for That's it to That's tremendous be. growth. <laughs> And tremendous growth the mushroom queen has experienced. So when the mushrooms are harvested, uh, some are supplied fresh and some are supplied uh, dried. Okay, so what we are doing now is to dry some of the mushrooms that we have harvested. And the reason behind drying, Fafa tells me, is so that you can preserve them for a, a longer, longer period. Right. So this is a drying table, exactly. right? Yeah, great stuff. I'm going to help her do this. <laughs> So how many of these are you able to supply to the market? Okay, on daily basis we can get averagely about 20 kilos of the fresh mushrooms. Mm. And the dry one we can on daily basis supply about 10 kilos. Because for the dry you need a lot of the fresh ones mm. in order to get the dry one. So mushrooms contain almost about 90% water. So when you dry them, they become very small. The dried mushrooms can also be ground into powder. As part of value addition, Pafafe has also started making mushroom kebabs. As a company, E90 Ghana Limited want to be one of the leading producers of mushroom and then the net exporter also of mushroom to our neighboring uh, uh, neighbor countries. countries and to the EU and the US market. Currently, we have in a contract to supply the Dubai market starting this January. Wow. And we are hoping that we'll get to other markets, international markets. That's great. Truly is great. And Fafafa has earned her title, the Mushroom Queen. All right, uh, some mushroom for live soup tonight wouldn't be bad. Well, there's more news on our website, myjoonline.com forward slash business. We have the story about uh, Echo Afezi appointed 
Substantive Ma uh, Managing Director of the Ghana Stock Exchange. You can read the full story on our website. Plus, uh, chocolate makers, uh, Hublin, Ivory Coast, Ghana Cocoa Premium with discounts. You, you saw that story in our summaries tonight. You want to read more about it? On our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for making the day to be back same time tomorrow.